There are two major psychoanalysts. There are a few, actually, um, including Lacan and Alan Watts and like a bunch of different people. But the two that most people have remember hearing, because at this point, people kind of have like people in their mind, but having people in your mind in terms of understanding the general flavor of what's going on is important. So Carl Jung and Sigmund Freud, most people in from America like know these two names. And it is because in the early 1900s, um, I mean, around 1920, 19, like, you know, 1920, um, they created a framework, a public framework for the analysis of the structure and growth of the human mind and mentality. So automatically it should be known that if those two men um, continue to be taught inside of a system, that means that there is a large body of work behind that. Not only the body of work, but then also um, colleges and etc. and educated people, the people considered to be the um, control or the, um, what's the word, um, perspective of society, right? So those people believe in these things such as Carl Jung and um, Sigmund Freud. So the thing that's important is that when someone is considered important, that means that they have control in America, specifically, they have control over a piece of everyone's mind. Therefore, and mind you, the things that they cataloged or categorized it's important. It's not, it's not basic information. It's actually the reason why is because it was important information that some, that people took and put, um, in a framework that could be understood by more people. So long story short, the distinction between these two guys is one of them believes that everyone is, um, motivated by their sex drive. One, one of them believes that everyone is motivated, motivated ultimately, pent ultimately, by their sex drive. The other one has a body of work which elevates between the mind maturing and then the spirit maturing. And again, both of these guys have major segments of the United States of America and the minds of people in the United States of America. The, the distinction is that the people who usually did not receive this information or find value in this information based off of their more immediate needs are people who are usually considered the poor or the um, disenfranchised, right? So long story short, um, this information and the reasons why this information is important is because it explains a lot of the issues and the holes present in the comprehension of civilization as we are literally living it to this day. Um, I I'm 32, so I have experience with when it felt and was different in terms of people's perception and expectation through reality. But our expectation of reality is not always supported by that by reality because long story short, reality is reality. So if it, so if it if it happens to you and is not from your frame of reference or understanding, then automatically you become a a piece that is easy to manipulate. But I digress. The majority of everyone's society isn't focused on manipulation, but at the same time, there are pieces of society that are based on manipulation. And if you come to um, any sort of table, but you're not understanding what's happening to and through you, which is what is given to you through culture, then you automatically appear to be weak. Now, I'm not saying that you will or are weak. I'm saying you appear to be weak. So um, I, it, whether it's for you to avoid appearing to be weak or whether it's because you um, shouldn't be weak and uh, people giving people that belong to you that you belong to. And I don't mean that in a literal sense. I definitely mean what is culture, what is heritage, what is bloodlines, what is, um, you know, society, all of those things. So I believe that one of the, one and some of the bigger things that people um, are still need to put emphasis on the fact that this is important information. Um, Carl Jung ha documents a time 
both before and after, and this is public documentation as well. So it's from both outside of his perspective because he became a public, a public image, but then also from inside of his perspective. And interestingly, he did not want to have his works published, but it was published anyway because people thought it would be um, you know, better for humanity if people had this information. But long story short, you literally have a pretty inside look on his process and the things that he had to go through before, during, and after um, having some type of random spiritual activation. And as a psychoanalyst, being able to sit down and document this stuff without being um, buffed at. <laughs> so approximately at that time is when these two psychoanalysts stopped associating with each other. And I'm not saying either one of them is perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But what I'm saying is the contributions that they give to society are worth society noting, especially when the society you are in are based off of these principles in the first place. So whether it be for a point of power or for your personal power, like um, claiming your personal power in the forms that that comes through, um, that is the purpose of noting, noting these things for yourself. That's why people say, go to therapy, go to therapy. What they really mean is find someone who has a body of work that effectively can assist you in navigating your mind. <laughs> Now, let's fast forward into the reason why I'm saying this and explain how this ties to my life. Um, obviously, 1992, I was born. Then after 1990, then in 2011, I graduated international baccalaureate. And then after that, uh, <laughs> I've had college and different communications classes as well as other things. And now I'm here, right? So... The last two years for me have been particularly problematic and I did not have previous, I had very minimal previous information about these types of things. Um, so long story short, um, the main thing that has helped give me um, additional personal strength points of power within my mind and the ability to stand strong on the things that I do is because I'm, I am I found this information. And so I know for a fact this information will also be valuable to other people because I find myself in, in mixed company. And that mixed company usually already has some form of self-care going on, which is the point. Like there's nothing wrong with, with caring about yourself. There's nothing wrong with taking care of yourself. It's, it's only wrong when you're when you therapize people and I definitely do not do that so long story short um, my website red antler um, actually highlights some of the more uh, specific things that I'm mentioning at this time um, long story short and I, I know I keep on saying that but I really mean that uh, <laughs> I could say short stories long too and it would still make it would make more sense <laughs> so long story short um, you know, like the spiritual aspects and the part that connects the mind to spirit and without drugs, without drugs, without intervention like that, um, those pieces are the pieces that have, um, convinced me of the power of these, um, concepts and also the fact that I met within this concept other culturally activated people, meaning both people who came and found the same way as I did, which was some type of spontaneous, like spiritual experience, and others who um, were taught from birth that they would experience a, an activation one day, and also those who, well, I'm assuming those who um, have done so through things such as maybe ayahuasca or something. But the thing is, I haven't met any ayahuasca people. I, I have felt ayahuasca people, so they're nearby, but they're not. <laughs> but I have not met any ayahuasca people. Like, um, I'm just now beginning to look into the concepts of, of uh, like, mildly psychoactive mushrooms. And the reason for this is because I'm an herbalist. It's my prerogative to know information about everything that comes out of the ground that people might be taking. So that's just first and foremost. 
I personally <laughs> do not, I've never tried mushrooms, okay? So I just want to be really specific about that so that people can understand, like they, they would look at me and think I've tried mushrooms. I've never tried mushrooms. I've never tried LSD. I've never tried in like uh, DMT. I'm, I produce, my spine is still fully producing t DMT. Why the fuck would I take DMT? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm just like, like literally, like my spiritual practices are aligned with the concept that the body creates states. And I've been able to pretty easily slip into these states, whether it be sleep states or otherwise, in a very, in a divergent way from how people usually express it before they go through types of training. Okay, like concerted types of training. Like I did not, I, I did not do any type of yoga that led me into these, this consciousness. I did not take a drug that led me into this consciousness. It was spontaneous. And so I know that there are other people because I met some of them who are also going through spontaneous um, activations and may or may not have support uh, through the process. So long story short, uh, it's short story long the the things i had to experience are actually documented which is interesting so i i also did myself a favor and drew um very light um outlines of the artwork that i want to remember and do from that consciousness that part of consciousness um the things that i want to remember because there's a lot of it that I don't want to remember. There's a lot of it that's on par with or worse than what what is happening in across the ocean, you know, that people is creating a problem with. Um, you know, like I had to experience this spontaneous spiritual experience for three months. And then after that, I have not been the same since then. Okay. And one of the main things that helped me, re like helped me because my mind is strong which means that I am always looking for patterns. I'm always looking for patterns. And that's what I was doing throughout the beginning stages, especially like within like the first two weeks to a month, I was just literally trying to stay alive for starters. And then second of all, because I had also had an accident and like some other shit that happened to me, right? Very, pre like very, a little bit before that, also, my taxes, which I had done by a tax professional, also reflect a large gap in my in my work schedule because I was working just fine, got run over by a pickup truck, and then I have only three because I was outside. I was outside running around. Like, there's many different points of example for me to highlight exactly and directly when this occurred. The other spiritual parts besides finding works of of by Carl G. Um, Young, but also watching dissertations done by, by and through college students and prof uh, professors, specifically talking about the recurrent themes of people who experience what Carl Jung also experienced, the actual experiencers and not the people who read it, because you reading it is only a piece of you consciously understanding it versus actually experiencing it. And it's a well-known experience. Therefore, like for me, my, my mental health professionals will most definitely, I will not trust anyone who, who at least does not know of the writings. <laughs> like I don't, I, like I'm not going to stress if they haven't had the experience, but I'm, I'm not going to anyone who believes that life ends before, like your, your whole thing is based off of sexuality because you're going to be trying to dissect some stuff from an incomplete and incorrect angle. <laughs> but yeah, so, um, if you don't understand the concept of, I got invited to the desert by the desert itself, then you don't have the activation that I have. And the activation that I have is somewhere between shaman, road keeper, and transformer. I didn't choose the spiritual life. The spiritual life chose me with glee, happily. <laughs> like, it, it's not obscene, but it really was. <laughs> Some of that shit was really cut through. A mind flip, a mind twist. <laughs> There's nothing that you can put there to resist. Transformation 
emancipation, participation. It's a win. Not again. I had to do it, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, so like basically the stuff that's going on in my life right now really just has to do with keeping my mind in order, my life in order, um, continuing to prune off the parts of my life that are still somehow like trying to connect themselves in, in a way to like deteriorate my life, um, learning new abilities, um, I've, I've learned quite a few already. And again, I didn't, I mean, I probably at some point had the whole shaman thing as a concept for me, but I of course didn't realize or recognize how deep of an activation that would be like in the first place. And then, you know, also being more actively aware of other people's stuff, because that means that I have sight all over the place that, and, <laughs> like, Regardless, I have sight all over the place, regardless of whose intellectual property it is, I can see right into and through you. So like I like I could already kind of do that. And but the good news is people usually found that as something pleasant or reassuring because I had or have generally a pleasant attitude. <laughs> I've spent this much time in Los Angeles and Los Angeles makes you mean Los Angeles like Los Angeles people makes you mean but the good news is that's part of why I'm here like that's that's what I'm actively using my civic power to do is to help make the inside parts of Los Angeles not conducive to people just like tearing each other down and like stealing and like you know none of that none of that weird shit like that con like stuff that's outside of the social contract of America and our protections that we have like that stuff like that's what it, because what else would I do if I have graduated from like high points of education got cascaded to the bottom rebuilt rebuilt and built everything that I know to a to a degree of quality that I appreciate and also currently building more in order to add security points of security and happiness for my future in prosperity like that's that's what I'm doing so any and all pieces of my mind and my spirit are pieces of my mind and my spirit that I definitely continue will continue like my like I definitely will continue and not only that but I crossed I crossed the railroad track and still have been able to retain everything that I built because of its value not only the value to me but the value to others so I, I don't know how much more I can do in order to convey the truth of my situation to people I have my accreditations, I have my certifications, and um, thankfully society is shifting in a lot of different beautiful ways. So I'm suspecting that in a matter of five years, people are going to be looking at me in a, very, in a more realistic way. Me, people like me, and my culture. So that's all. Um, I'll probably be creating a piece of my own cultural um, understanding surrounding some of the some of the concepts that have been made popular by Carl Jung but just to remind you the, the because it's based in the truth that means there are plenty of cultures all over the planet who automatically have this as I continue to um, connect more with my mother's tribe um, I will probably learn more about their perspective on the concept and also add to their perspective the understanding that I have gone through and come through in relation to being born um, in the United States of America, but also being uh, connected to my cultures, not just one, but many. So long story short, um, short stories long, uh, have a great day <laughs> and also mind your mind.